Oh, he was so he was furious when he was writing that this makes no sense. And as more info has come out about this kid being a terrorist affiliate and being anti-Semitic, lots more examples. Hassan has refused to disavow him. The opposite, actually, he continues to prop him up. Rashid Al Haddad responds to this from Yemen. I did not mean the Jews, but the Zionists. Do not confuse everyone. I respect every Muslim Jew who stands for the truth. <laughs> That's and awesome. I will do everything I can to protect him. <laughs> I think he meant Muslim or Jew. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah like, just, like this dude learning. What an L, too. He, this guy doesn't even speak English, guys. One, he didn't even ever say the uh, he wanted to kill Jewish people. This guy's correcting him. He was like, "No, dude, I want to kill all the people who are trying to do an ethnic cleansing of Palestine. That's who I'm trying to come after, and I am waging war against those people who have waged war against me my entire life." Yeah, what a disgrace, bro. Imagine being like a a massive rich content creator living in America and you're beefing with some again powerless 22 year old uh <laughs> who then has to come out here and correct you from halfway across the world and be like actually no uh you're simplifying my political statement in order to dunk on your rival streamer ex-friend what the hell <laughs> yeah it, it, absolutely crazy Apparently, Ethan Klein, I haven't watched this clip yet. We just got it sent to us from a viewer. Apparently, Ethan Klein accused Hassan Piker of doing rape apologia. Oh and now God. he is going to respond to it. This is, uh, it looks like Felix from Chapo Trap House in the background mm. here, yeah. uh, drinking a Mountain Dew, a man of Gavin's art. I think it's the hey. Baja Blast. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. This is actually sad to me, the whole Hassan, Ethan Klein breakup. It really does bum me out that all of that went down and that. Ethan continues to regurgitate Zionist propaganda that he continues to defend Israel. It's really sickening to me because I really was a fan of H3. I still am a fan of some of their content. I think Ethan's hilarious and I genuinely enjoyed their dynamic on leftovers when they did that show together. So yeah, it really sucks to see this happen. Um, obviously I agree with Hassan. I don't agree with Ethan's takes at all, but I wish they could come to some sort of a reconciliation. Yeah. And to your point, it felt like maybe in the immediate aftermath of October 7th, and they had that really long podcast mm -hmm. and they were both crying and it really was vulnerable and they were trying to meet each other where they were. And to be honest, Ethan was being pretty unreasonable and Hassan really kind of gave him every benefit of the doubt for a long time. And then Ethan started doing this thing that I just mentioned is not everyone's favorite to do. And that's listening to your podcast and then bitching to you about it after it happens. Like if, you know, it, it, again, even if somebody I really like, like I have a hard time taking that shit, right? I'll just be honest with the world. Like I, you could probably tell if you listen to me for five seconds, Gavin's much better at responding to that shit. Um, but it's like, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. It, it, anyway, uh, it was a bummer to see that they, that even Hassan Piker, somebody that Ethan had respect for, couldn't reach him. And I think it also shows guys, I'm not trying to sound insensitive, but how deep propaganda runs. You know what I mean? Uh, it, this is what the brainwashing of your whole life can kind of culminate in. And even if you are a good person, like I know he said a lot of hateful things and I know he's espoused a lot of hateful beliefs, but I think deep down, Ethan Klein is just as likely as any of us to live a life of a good person. Now he's a little greedy, blah, 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 whatever. Right. But uh, he begs for donations all the time. I didn't want that to come out as anti-Semitic after <laughs> I've clarified that for a second. I'm sensitive about that. But long story short is it's a bummer that they can never reach each other and that this is what their relationship has been reduced to. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. sucks. Let's take a look, though, um, because I imagine Hassan is, is at his boiling point. Ethan has been, you know, posting about him on his Instagram story and acting like it was some crazy sin for Hassan to interview that, like, Houthi pirate kid a year ago or whenever that was like just stupid crap like that and also it seems like every time someone from hassan's audience says something that ethan doesn't like it gets blamed on hassan and it's like bro hassan is a massive massive live streamer he has a huge audience obviously there's going to be some bad apples obviously there's going to be some trolls obviously there's going to be some people that say like you know ugly things uh, but that's not that you can't blame that on Hassan in the same way that I wouldn't blame some gross comment on Ethan if it came from the H3 community yeah it's that's stupid I don't know he's well, talking about know. Northern Lion <laughs> yeah he's talking about Northern Lion <laughs> yeah. the bald guy the only bald guy no um uh, I someone was saying that he um he called me uh, a a rape apologist for October 7 which I think is um 
is is not only incorrect, but it's also a weird line of attack when, you know, Israel... Haaretz recently came out with an article that the pro-rape protest that uh, the, the Israeli rabid weirdos engaged in was actually significantly more violent than we had previously seen um and that there were they were actually literally with arms uh, like wearing balaclavas they like violently apprehended the military police yeah like that came out yesterday the um the 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 pro rape protest happened where you know israeli concentration camp guards at Sidi Taiman brutally raped a palestinian to death numerous ones but one that was like made it to the headlines um, so it's weird. He played a video of you laughing at Kamala talking about rape on October 7 and said, that's proof. Yeah. What am I supposed to do in that situation? Um, sit there and be like this unsubstantiated, one of the, one of the most well-documented, uh, you know, acts of, of violence overall, um, where, uh, the, the least substantiated news coverage over it uh was was met with like just no fucking resistance whatsoever with the exception of like internal communications from the new york That's times the editorial BS2. team being like like obviously hassan it, I'm, i haven't seen the clip but obviously he wasn't laughing at the concept of like sexual assault obviously not like how could you say that about hassan clearly what he was laughing at was the ridiculous nature of that sensationalist propaganda um which very obviously was that propaganda uh, come on, like how how long do you have to be alive? How many wars do you have to live through before you realize how they uh, roll out the same playbook every time to manufacture consent? Uh, for, I mean, this is like a, a freaking everyone should know this. Come on. No, this is good. a bridge too far for us. What the fuck are we doing? We're like dropping the ball on this, which kind of went nowhere. And everyone just kept repeating the unsubstantiated reporting on it as though these uh, violent these violent barbaric uh, monsters were just like breaching the Gaza boundary specifically to go and rape the beautiful Israeli women. Like the, the it's, it's repackaged colonial propaganda. Yeah. It's Israel has never offered like actual, like coherent evidence for this. Yeah. He also apparently thinks Twitch is liable for me interviewing a Yemeni teenager who's only known genocide his entire life. Like liable, like, 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 it, like, if like I'm, I'm, or... I'm doing pro terror propaganda. Uh, yeah. Uh, are any Jews good? I like how he has to explain that to the guy. Like, wait, why would you be liable for interviewing somebody? Oh, that person did crime. Oh, okay. That's crazy thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's like, does that Houthi kid probably have a couple problematic beliefs? sure that wasn't the point of the interview it wasn't a debate it was like hey let's talk to this person who's lived a life none of us can understand or relate to as hassan said he's been bearing witness to actual genocide for the entirety of his lifetime yeah maybe that would radicalize you in, in some unfortunate way um that's not what the interview was about it's not like hassan had him on there to say hey bro tell me about how how awful the jews are or something like I think once or twice, or I'm not trying to downplay anything, but I think people point to like a few tweets from that Houthi kid where he said something anti-Semitic, and it's like, yeah, that sucks. I'm sure Hassan doesn't agree with that. Obviously, Hassan's not anti-Semitic, um, but that doesn't mean you can't. That doesn't just mean you can't interview anyone from a region where that ideology is unfortunately prevalent due to, like I said, radicalization. Of course, there's going to be a lot of people that hate Israel. Of course, of course, that's the case in the Middle East in the same way that they hate America. It's so intentionally self-absolving i know a, a you know an adult man uh i know you guys don't like me talking about hassan and all i appreciate that there's a lot of crossover i'm grateful for those of you that are able to watch us both it's impossible for me to ignore that the majority of these people are coming from his community it's something that he and his audience refuse to reckon with hassan's whitewashing of that houthi kid who said he wants to spear all zionists to death was frankly disgusting i don't give a that he's seen an episode of One Piece. I'd like LOL. to know why he's so hanging the kid out did, with Sorry to pause it again, but apparently the Houthi kid didn't even say anything anti-Semitic. He just said anti-Zionist stuff. Yeah, right. That's like saying I want to spear all Nazis to death. That's not problematic. The Zionist state is currently doing a Holocaust. Literally a genocide. I think that, and you're going to pearl clutch about some rando with no power saying he wants to spear Nazis. 
Come on. Bro, it, it would be like if we interviewed a guy that like tweeted out death to America, like kill all Americans. We'd be like, yeah, dude, he's got some beef, but we want to talk to him anyway. You know what I mean? Oh, captain of a Chinese cargo vessel, a.k.a. a hostage. Oh, he was so he was furious when he was writing that this makes no sense. And as more info has come out about this kid being a terrorist affiliate and being anti-Semitic, lots more examples. Hassan has refused to disavow him. The opposite, actually. He continues to prop him up. Rashid Al-Haddad responds to this from Yemen. I did not mean the Jews, but the Zionists do not confuse everyone. I respect every Muslim Jew who stands for the truth. <laughs> That's and awesome. I will do everything I can to protect him. <laughs> I think he meant Muslim or Jew. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah like, just, like this dude learning. What an L, too. He, this guy doesn't even speak English, guys. One, he didn't even ever say the uh, he wanted to kill Jewish people. This guy's correcting him. He was like, no, dude, I want to kill all the people who are trying to do an ethnic cleansing of Palestine. That's who I'm trying to come after. And I am waging war against those people who have waged war against me my entire life. Yeah. What a disgrace, bro. Imagine being like a a massive rich content creator living in America and you're beefing with some again powerless 22 year old uh <laughs> who then has to come out here and correct you from halfway across the world and be like actually no uh you're simplifying my political statement in order to dunk on your rival streamer ex friend what the hell <laughs> yeah it, it absolutely crazy english from literally like reading twitter okay yeah learned english from reading twitter while like saudis were triple tapping funerals yeah for like, like he's it's american years weapon. old right yeah that's about yeah for yeah like um nearly half his life yemen was just pr probably the most horrific like aerial bombardment campaign uh it, at least one of them in the region at the time. Sorry, he didn't go to your fucking specific Twitter page, Ethan, and yeah. figure out the exact HR pro thing to do. <clears throat> Making the like, targets and only resistance of an ongoing genocide. Do this is so grim, says Aisha. And um, I thought that was like poignant, but also kind of crazy to just like really imagine a world where like you got a dude, everything he's known is like death and destruction. OK, and he's uh, he's on Twitter, the everything app, and he's posting like, hey, guys, you know, <laughs> I don't hate all Jewish people. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, what are we doing? What are, what is happening yeah. in the world? <sighs> it's just, like. Yemen, the poorest, kind, if not the poorest, like definitely. In the bottom 10 or bottom yeah. before Gaza, Gavin, I think the images that had come out of Yemen of starvation were some of the gnarliest, nastiest things I'd ever seen in my entire life. I remember seeing babies that were so malnourished. I remember people talking about the aerial bombardments. I first really became familiar with the issue when Ro Khanna and Rand Paul were leading that bipartisan uh, resolution. And I did my homework on it. Kyle Kalinske was talking a lot about it on Secular Talk at the time. And I remember thinking how horrible it is. And now almost everyone's forgotten about it because it's not quite as horrible as what's happening in Gaza right this second. And this kid even isn't thinking about his own life and his own community right this second. He has the forethought to not want to misrepresent the pursuits of uh, the Houthis and the people he's involved with and saying we're not anti-Jewish, we're anti-Zionist. Meanwhile, he's arguing with Ethan Klein in his air-conditioned fucking house in California. Like, it's crazy, man. I don't know. It's just beyond words. Five. Um, and then a guy who sells, like, as far as I can ascertain, um, has made 700 billion dollars selling like pastel colored crew necks and he's like this 19 year old is going to kill me in yemen in yemen from yemen <laughs> i just like i my first um the first uh instance of this stuff i saw was when uh like last year during uh his first dust up with you when he did the thing that like all these guys do where it's like 
they live in America. Their families live in America. They're, they'll never fucking move to Israel. And in what fact, did I just say? one of their family well, members the moved page, from Israel because it actually sucks to live there. Bro, they're making him... <laughs> bro, he's posting like... He's posting like he's got barred from Columbia campus, dude. <laughs> Like that dog, you're in Yemen. Like, what? What do you yeah, mean? It's just like making him do this shit. Like, but but the, he did that thing where like uh, last year, where he's like, "Oh, you want you want to make it so Israel isn't a Jewish homeland? Where is my wife who lives with me in Beverly Hills in California? Where's she gonna go? In the garbage? In right. That's literally what it is, though. It's like, yeah, dude." Nobody wants to live there uh, because it's become massively unsafe. You could be attacked at any time. And, like, obviously, Iran has been very uh, passive, if you want to call it that, reasonable. They've been really reluctant to start World War III, thank God. But there's, it's also totally true that after Israel does a massive strike on Lebanon or on the Houthis or wherever the fuck, Right, the all the plane tickets to New York get sold out, and then people are like, "Uh oh, we don't want to be here in case there's any retaliation." You know yeah. what I mean? And you missed it, but he goes into the point where uh, Ethan was crying about months ago, like, "Oh, where is my wife that lives in Beverly Hills going to go if there's no homeland for the Jews in the Middle East that we've stolen from the Palestinians?" Oh in the toilet? Do you just want to kill her? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she's gonna go where she is now, which is not Israel. Yeah, this is Hassan talks to literal terrorists on stream. Twenty eight thousand likes. I think killing over eleven thousand children is worse than anything some dude with a dynamite has ever done, which is kind of a funny that's just way a to severe a low like, ball. Yeah, which, that, that's like someone being like, not only is it a low ball, but this dude is not even like. I, I asked him straight up. I was like, "Are you a part of Ansar Allah?" Like again, like are you are you a, a quote unquote Houthi? And he was like, "No, I'm not. I'm I'm Yemeni. I'm yeah. I'm this kid's handsome as hell though. He'd take all of our jobs if he'd been born where we were." Yeah, it's from they Yemen. Call him, uh, Timothy Chalamet or whatever, remember? True, I guess that's right. Yeah, <laughs> he, you know, not not just anybody gets called Houthi Timothy Chalamet. I'm like, you got to get lost in those eyes, but also look at the fashion sense. You know what I mean? I never, I never be dressing like that. I don't layer like that. Yep. That's it. And but it's really funny because this guy turns around and goes, "You know, they want to eradicate the Western <laughs> world, right?" Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I. What this is like universe? you know what this reminds me of? I think Ethan Klein got in on this too, now that I, you know, remember. But remember that whole stupid discourse where people like for the first time read Osama bin Laden's Oh manifesto? yeah, we argued with Adam and Sitch about yeah, that. Yeah, we argued yeah, exactly. And and people were like, Oh, turns out he was a more sophisticated thinker than I realized. Like not to give credit to the guy, but a lot of people literally thought his entire ideology was just I hate America. I hate freedom. Therefore, I'm going to do terrorist attack. I hate and, for our freedom. Exactly. You read his manifesto, and you know it's a little bit more complicated than that. Just a little bit, especially if you narrowly take out the parts on Palestine. Exactly. Um, and I, I think Ethan was one of the people who had a big issue with that. He was like, "How dare you apply any level of nuance to this? No, Osama bin Laden just hates America. He hates freedom, and it's that simple. Like a freaking like Sean Hannity or something." Like, dude, do you not do you not have any desire to unpack the nuance of why things happen? Yeah, most people that do bad things, they don't just do them because they wake up in the morning and decide that they want to do something bad. Like, it's usually a little bit more complicated than that. And even in our own country, if you look at some of the people who have really problematic opinions, like some of the people that live in extreme poverty who are also racist. You know, maybe they hate black people or maybe they blame immigrants or something. Guess what? Even in that case, usually it's a lot more complicated and a lot more nuanced than just people deciding to be bad people, people waking up and deciding to be racist. No, usually it's because of misinformation. It's because of propaganda. It's because of rich media companies scapegoating the issues that poor Americans face onto marginalized communities. Decades of poisoning the well, hundreds of exactly. years, Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, we can have a conversation about that. Um, even again, when we're talking about people in our own country that have very problematic opinions or that hold racist or xenophobic opinions, like we can still have a conversation about why those people are the way they are. We can make fun of them. We do. Um, but we also are capable of having an empathetic approach to understanding why people are vulnerable to this sort of uh, logic in the first place. Um, it seems like Ethan Klein is just refusing to even do that. Um, when when this kid comes from a situation way worse than any 
any of the you know impoverished people in America. Um, and even even that being the case, it seems like this kid genuinely isn't an anti-Semite. Yeah, this kid seems very reasonable given every single circumstance. And Ethan Klein is just looking like a fucking piss baby throwing a tantrum. So you living in? Dude, what the f are you Dude, talking about? You you're like perceived. You're <laughs> he wants to eradicate the Western world, and you're laughing. Um, it's like it's it's there is nothing there is nothing funnier than this. Uh, than than like ima like hallucinating a reality, hallucinating a reality that like, uh, you know, people in Yemen are gonna come to the United States of America and eradicate the Western world. <laughs> They have one like what's the fucking you're the plane nerd? What what's the, the one plane? They, they have like, like one F five that doesn't really <laughs> run most of the time. If one F five destroys all, not just America, England, the Western world, German, like the whole <laughs> EU. If it, one F five does that, then like game okay, then we suck. Yeah, like okay, that like we deserved it. <laughs> I would like to clarify that any Jewish person, Christian or Muslim or any other who is innocent, we will never hurt them. We protect them and ask them for what they want, what they like and what they need. We stand for the oppressed, which is why we oppose Zionism. It is Zionist ideology that is wreaking havoc upon innocent Palestinians and Lebanese. Anyway. But based, I mean, I see no issue there. I, I spot the lie. Zionism is a white supremacist genocidal ideology currently responsible for the greatest human rights atrocity that Zach and I have probably ever bared witness to. Yeah, I don't I don't see a problem with that sentiment.